What do you think of that heel, guys? Today we're going to be talking about the heel effect in x-ray radiography. Hey guys, I'm Brian Nett from HowRadiologyWorks.com. We have bite-sized content for those in the radiology field, especially technologists. So today we're going to be talking about the heel effect, again, not having anything to do with the anatomy, but rather on an x-ray tube, the fact that on one portion of the anode where the x-rays are coming out, x-rays are going to be attenuated as they're coming out of the anode itself. And that's going to lead to, on that heel side, it's going to lead to that attenuation. It's going to lead to lower intensity on the heel side, but a higher average energy because the lower energy photons are preferentially attenuated on the heel side. So then on the non-heel side, it's going to have higher intensity and lower average energy. And we're gonna go through that in the schematic picture coming up on the heel effect in X-ray imaging. What is beam hardening? Beam hardening is what happens as X-rays are coming through and then they're gonna pass through some filter material. That filter material could be the patient, it could be a table, it could be the anode itself as the x-rays are coming out of the anode. Any of these things can cause beam hardening. We'll talk about what beam hardening is, but first let's think about if we have an x-ray beam coming in and that x-ray beam and the x-ray beams that come out of our x-ray tubes in a medical system, they are not what's called monoenergetic or one energy. There's many energies, right? We talked about this before. There's many energies primarily because of the brehm strolong interaction. And so the X-ray spectrum looks something like this, where if we plot the number of photons as a function of the energy, it looks something like this. And sometimes you'll have some peaks here too due to characteristic radiation. But in general, it's gonna be an average energy somewhere in the middle of this kind of spectrum. And then after that's the input x-rays, then after it passes through your material, so imagine I put a piece of thin sheet of metal here, or I put the patient there, as it passes through, the x-rays coming out, our filtered spectrum is gonna look something like this. And the lower energy photons are preferentially attenuated so because there's fewer lower energy photons compared to the higher energy photons coming out, the average energy is going to be higher. But the average energy is higher doesn't mean that you have more photons. You actually have less photons, right? There's fewer photons or the integral under this curve, the area under these curves is lower under the green curve than under the blue curve. So there's less x-rays coming through but their average energy is higher. And that's what we mean when we say beam hardening. So we're saying total flux is going down, but that average energy is going up. That's what we call beam hardening. And what would beam hardening look like if it was happening in the target itself? So let's go back to what we talked about when we talked about generating x-rays and generating x-rays with a medical x-ray tube. So we have a filament current down here. That filament current is gonna boil off electrons. As those electrons get boiled off, we want to pull them across, right? From this is called the cathode, they get pulled across to the anode. And then in order to interact in the anode, they're gonna get pulled across by a kilovolt potential or a KVP. And so if we think about the electrons coming across here, those electrons are then gonna interact with some likelihood in the target, this heavy metal target. So for instance, most likely interaction is Bremsstrahlung, and then they're gonna come out, and I have a little zoom in I'm gonna show over here of the same thing. So if we have our X-rays coming out, imagine the electron stops here in the target and it could either come, the X-ray could come out this way or the X-ray could come out this way. And if the X-rays come out this way down here, I'm gonna show you just with little colors. Here's green to indicate this path. Here's red to indicate this path. Now I'll take these same lines and I'll put them up here. 
and you can see the green line is shorter than the red line. I've just drawn it just to make it clear. So that means red is going to have more metal to pass through and hence more beam hardening. So longer path length means more beam hardening. So what's it called if you have beam hardening in the target itself or in the anode itself? It's called the heel effect. And how does that look if you're talking about it in an actual situation, in a patient imaging situation? Imagine the anode heel side was down here. So if the anode heel side is down here, then we're going to draw a plot again of our x-ray spectrum. Our x-ray spectrum up here is our reference spectrum. This, this is the spectrum on the non-heel side. And then we'll draw a few more photons and we'll draw the plot down here. And again, the x-ray spectrum down here now, it is going to be a little bit less in terms of the area under here. So fewer photons coming through because they had to pass through more of the target material itself. But the average energy is going to be a little bit higher because those photons were preferentially attenuated, those lower energy photons. So for the anode heel effect, if we talk about on the non-heel side, it's going to have a higher intensity and a lower average energy. And then on the heel side, it's going to have a lower intensity and a higher average energy. So the lower intensity is probably the more important part because the intensity or the number of photons coming through, that has to do directly with the noise in the image. And also we'll sometimes draw, you know, more arrows down here, more photons right here to indicate that it's a higher intensity on the non-heel side of the beam. And how could you compensate for that using a physical, uh, physical filter? So we talked about how the amount of beam hardening depends on the amount of material that you're passing through. So if the anode was down here again, then we would want to have a filter that looks like this, where there's more filter material on the non-anode side and less filter material on the anode side. In that case, when we're done, we can have about equal between the top and the bottom in terms of filtration. So we, we're thinking about a spectra which would look similar on both sides. So that's one way to compensate. Another way to compensate is to think about the anatomy in the patient itself. So, for instance, if you're talking about the pelvis and the abdomen, if you're trying to image that at the same time, the pelvis is going to be more attenuating than the upper abdomen. So, which side would you want to use? Would you want to use the heel side for the pelvis or the non-heel side for the pelvis? you would want to use the non-heel side, right? Because you could think about the upper abdomen, that would be on the heel side, so it would have a little bit less flux, but we could kind of even that out by having a little bit more attenuation in the pelvis. So those are the kind of regions, the kind of tricks you can play. It is the heel effect in x-ray imaging is caused by beam hardening in the target itself. And we can know that on the heel side, there's going to be, in comparison with the non-heel side, there's going to be less flux, but a higher average energy. And we can compensate for that. Thanks for hanging around, guys. Now that you know about the heel effect and its impact, check out our video on beam quality in general.